Hi folks, it's Chris, welcome back. So, after covering the tripod and the mount, we want to work our way up, maybe to the most pressing question for newcomers. What actual telescope shall I choose? Short side note for nomenclature. In astronomy, we often talk about the whole rig as the telescope, but we also might call it the rig or the telescope rig. If you specifically want to talk about the optical component itself, Without any other stuff, we call it the OTA, but sometimes we call it the scope or telescope. It's confusing. OTA stands for optical tube assembly, meaning only the bare optical tubers, something, something like this, without anything. And from here on, we call this optical part OTA or scope, whatever. So the OTA is obviously an important part of this hobby and therefore you should give the choosing of it a fair amount of consideration, while never underestimating the importance of a solid mount, but we talked about this already. So, what OTA to choose as a beginner? I already covered the different types of telescopes within the theory chapter, so definitely make sure to watch this first, but as a quick reminder, there are two main groups. Scopes or OTAs with a mirror and those with lenses, everyone with their own advantages and disadvantages. And I mean, I could now list my favorite top 10 telescopes, but everyone else did that already, like we do with this amazing compilation of 10 affordable telescopes. So that would be lame, what else? Instead, my plan goes like this. Reach out to four, actually five different astrophotographers, all running amazing YouTube channels themselves, each using different telescopes since years and each having collected a ton of experience using them. I asked them whether they want to participate within this episode and share their experience, how they like their specific OTA, what is good for and whether they would recommend this OTA to a beginner. And you know what? Because they are just amazing, they all said yes. And seriously, I can't thank you guys enough. And it's a great demonstration of the inspiring spirit among us astrophotographers around the world and the urge to help each other. I mean, look at that. We have Dahlia and Antoine from US with Antoine having French roots, Stacy from UK, Widu from the Netherlands and Tim from Germany. What an international cast. Very cool. Thank you guys very much. Links to all the channels are in the description below. And okay, so let's start with the scopes using mirrors. And within that, without any further ado, here's Widu from Astroforum presenting the Smith Cassegrain telescope. So hi there, Chris. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation to be part of your video. I will tell you something about the Celestron Edge HD 8-inch telescope that I recently bought. The things I love most about this telescope is, first of all, it is a very short tube, as you can see, uh, and it's pretty lightweight, so it's easy to carry outside, set it up, store inside the house, and at the same time you will be getting a big resolution. So you have an 8 inch aperture and a focal length also of 2000 millimeters, which really allows you to zoom in on some of the smaller targets uh, in deep space. So for example, I was able to capture um, the Horsehead Nebula, the Flame Nebula, really close up of those uh, two nebulae, so that was pretty awesome. And I also made a video on uh, the core of the Orion Nebula. I was able to capture the four trapezium stars at the core of the Orion Nebula and also there were a lot of other stars surrounding that trapezium that were in the process of star formation, so solar system formation. So that was pretty awesome to, to capture and to see. Uh, at the same time, there are also some disadvantages, I would say. The first one is, of course, the price. This telescope is more expensive when you compare it to a beginner level uh, apochromatic refractor that you can buy. Uh, the second thing is, of course, also because it has such a long focal length and also a native F ratio of F10, it becomes more challenging to accurately track objects in the night nice sky at that magnification, at that level of magnification. So you really need a solid equatorial mount to be able to do that. And I actually also bought a 0.7 reducer. So I am um, working with a focal length of 1500 millimeters uh, at a F ratio of F7. And that actually makes it a little bit easier to also catch uh, deep sky objects. And I'm uh, now in the process of catching some galaxies also, uh, the Whirlpool galaxy and the Pinwheel galaxy. I'm really looking forward to that as well. So one final question you asked me is whether or not I would actually recommend this telescope for beginning astrophotographers. And my answer to that is 
No, basically. Um, when you just start out with astrophotography, I would actually recommend uh, buying a shorter focal length uh, reflector or refractor. Uh, because it makes it a lot easier to track objects in the night sky. You will have a wider field of view and there are so many things you have to learn at first. How to set up an equatorial mount, how to polar align it, how to accurately track objects in the night sky. And then it really helps to have a shorter focal length and a wider field of view uh, because otherwise you will get frustrated. So that would be my advice here and good luck with your video. Okay, thank you Widu. Very cool that you contributed your thoughts about the SET. Your collaboration means a lot to me. Again, thank you very much. So, if Widu names the focal length of 2000 mm as one of the main disadvantages for beginners, why not choose a smaller one? And so did Dali and Antoine from Galactic Hunter. They chose a shorter reflector and also a different type, the Newtonian reflector. Here they are. Hey, what's up guys? So, let's quickly talk about our a Newtonian telescope, which is the Orion 8-inch astrograph, which we love. A lot! So, what can the Newtonian astrograph do that other telescopes can't? It, for one, is very fast. And it also produces diffraction spikes, which we are a big fan of in this house. It's very fast at f3.9, and as you can see with the spider veins here, it will give us diffraction spikes, uh, beautiful ones, we love them so much, and it's great. So, when are our favorite times to use the Newtonian astrograph? Um, I would say pretty much every time we image, besides when it's a, a large target. For example, many targets will not fit in there because they are too large. For example, the Hart Nebula or the North American Nebula, uh, because this is 800 mm in focal length. So, it's perfect for most targets, but not the very, very large ones. That's also a reason why we love using it so much, as it seems pretty versatile, except for large targets. Yes. So uh, some reasons we may not use our Newtonian astrograph are well, sometimes it, it can be a little bulky to lug around as compared to our refractors that we have. Uh, we worry a lot about the fragility of the mirrors inside and collimation. And collimation, guys, is a bit of a, of a pain. You have to do it every single time. But if you, if you learn how to do it, it's really, really quick. So for us, it's very quick it's fast. and we don't even think about it anymore. So, would we buy this Newtonian astrograph if we were beginners? Of course, yes. we totally recommend it. We love this so much. We love this telescope. It was our very first telescope. It has um, been like five, six years now. We still have it. We're still using it. So it's a really, really great telescope. It's super fast and it's a great Newtonian telescope. And most importantly, very affordable very compared affordable. to refractors. Yep. So yes, that was pretty much it. So if you guys uh, want a fast, affordable telescope, go with a Newtonian telescope. Okay, thanks Dahlia, thanks Antoine. Thanks for replying to this request like the next day or so. Love your channel, very cool. Their recommendation sounds like music in my ears because the Newtonian telescope was also my first one and it's also my favorite one and I love it as well. But we will dive deep into the details of this telescope in the next episode. So stay tuned and stay subscribed. Okay, there were two OTAs using mirrors. Antoine and Dahlia pointed out the pros, but also mentioned the issues like fragile mirrors or collimation. Are uh, lens scopes an alternative? Let's continue with Tim from Astroaddict. He was so kind to contribute his insights into mm, medium to long refractors, somewhat the same focal length than the astrograph of Dahlia and Antoine. <laughs> Tim, let's go. The refractor is the most basic form of a telescope. I like them because they are plug and play, easy to use and come in all different sizes. This one has a focal length of 714 mm, medium to long focal length. Handling such a big scope is not as easy as handling a camera lens or a smaller refractor. You'll need an auto guiding system and a mount that can handle the entire thing. But as soon as you figured all of this out, there are no limitations to what you can do. The great thing about this focal length, you can get amazing images of the big targets in the sky close up with all the details and you have enough magnification to resolve the smaller targets in the sky. Dust lanes in the North American Nebula or the Whirlpool Galaxy framed up nicely. No problem with such a telescope. Getting those details in the big targets is great, but sometimes you want this amazing image of Andromeda Galaxy with the entire galaxy framed up nicely. You look at the laptop screen in the night and see… too much. This focal length is just too big to resolve the biggest targets in the sky. And sadly, one of the most beautiful galaxies of all time is in there. 
You can buy such a telescope as a beginner, but only if you are determined to invest in this hobby and have a capable mount to handle it. If I could go back in time two years ago, I would maybe consider some smaller refractors. But with a scope like this, it's a huge hill to climb, with a beautiful view from the top. Wow, thank you Tim for your thoughts and the pros and cons of your refractor scope. That means a lot to me. Definitely check out his live Q&A sessions, superb source of astro insights. And following his thoughtful advice, we are left with the short baby refractors. Some call them nothing more than a big camera lens, but they are much more. Stace and Luna were kind enough to share their views about their favorite telescope type. Last but not least, here they are. Hi, Stace and Luna here, and today I'm going to talk to you about short refractor telescopes. Isn't that right, Liam? What do you think? Any good? I think that's a thumbs up. So, these telescopes are often super compact, super portable, and very, very forgiving to the beginner astrophotographer. Often up in space, these targets that we're shooting are huge. For example, let's talk about the Heart and Soul Nebula. With a short telescope like this, with a really wide field of view, am I boring you? You can often fit them in on one, on your image sensor in one. You won't have to do a mosaic, which is like different panels of the target. These telescopes, I often call them the plug and play kind of telescope as well. When you put them outside, you don't have to wait for them to cool down for ages. You don't have to learn how to collimate them. And as long as you look after them, you won't ever have to collimate them unless, you know, unless they take a knock. And often, um, even then, they come off better than their sort of Newtonian and SCT counterparts. Not that I've gone around dropping telescopes. These telescopes are also great for visual. If you get an ap apochromatic version of the refractor, you can expect sort of diamonds on inky black when you're looking through that telescope. And I remember my first view through a refractor compared to a Newtonian, it just literally blew me away. There can be downsides to these telescopes though. They're often more expensive, but these days there are lots of different manufacturers producing high quality apochromatic um, refractors. So chances are you'll be able to find one in your price range. Because of the wide field of view, they're not great for targets such as planets, uh, small planetary nebulas, and you know small galaxies. The exception on the galaxies thing is Andromeda galaxy. That thing is huge, so you're looking at a wider field of view to capture that in one rather than doing a mosaic. Isn't that right, Lee? What do you think? <laughs> You can shoot planets with these shorter telescopes, but you would have to use a substantial Barlow lens, and that brings other problems to it. Would I recommend one of these telescopes for a beginner? Absolutely yes. Here in the UK we get not great weather, so often I'm getting my kit in and out as quick as possible, and with a lighter bit of kit such as this I can pick up the whole rig without pulling my back out and bring it inside. So yeah, if there's something I can recommend that you will have in your astronomy toolkit, it's a short refractor telescope. And there's a couple here that are my personal favorites. Give me five. High five. Good girl. <laughs> oh, Luna, thank you so much, Stace. Definitely check out her channel. She does a great job in explaining the underlying theory. I shamelessly copied her idea of the simulated camera sensor for my own theory videos, so Stace, I owe you one. Now let's wrap things up. Widu gave us insights into the luxury of zooming deep into the night sky, but wisely warned us, beginners, of the difficulties that comes with it. Dahlia and Antoine are, like me, 
big in love with their versatile but a big bulky Newtonian astrograph. Tim loves his plug-and-play refractor but would have chosen a smaller one to flatten the steep learning curve as a beginner. And Stace underlines this point as shorter focal length scopes are more forgiving and very portable and covering a huge area in the night sky, which is, unintuitively for most beginners, mostly what we want to do in astrophotography. So the main message of all this voice is heard is, as a beginner, take it easy, take it short, take it portable or take a cheap and versatile Newtonian. Whatever way, the scope must fit your requirements. Listen to Widu, focal length is not everything. Do you want to travel with your OTA or can you afford a heavy but rigid telescope mount? Are you mainly interested in tiny planets or do you love massive cloud structures? When it comes to the choosing and the possible focal length, I want to share one more advice. Download Stellarium, enter the specs of a common ASPC sensor, for example, and try different focal lengths. 400, 750, 1500 or Widu's 2000 mm. And then see what can be seen during different seasons with your scope. That might give you a better grasp on everything. And now? Definitely make sure to visit Stace, Tim's, Widu's and Dahlia and Antoine's YouTube channel. It was a great honor having them here. They do a fantastic job in creating informative and inspiring content and I learn a ton of things with every video they release. Thank you so much for participating in this video. And to you, as always, I say clear skies everyone. Until next time here on Catching Photons.